Hi, everybody. Welcome, and we are so glad you are here for a Getting Started with Microbit session. Um, my name is Brenda Sherry, and I'm a Connected North School coordinator, and I'm coming, and I work also with Code to Learn as, a, as an education coordinator. Um, so I'm coming in from Guelph, Ontario, and really glad to see all of you here. So please continue to be active in the chat. Um, Peter and my colleague Michael also are going to be monitoring that. So I'm going to share my screen right now. And to get us started, you will, I won't see this chat anymore. So what I've said to them is please interrupt me and, um, and let me know what's going on in there so we can, uh, we can be really a learning community this morning. So I would, as I said, Michael Quinn and Peter Skillen are here with me. Um, we are part of um, Code to Learn, which is a federal grant from um, the federal government called CanCode, and we partner with Taking It Global, the Canadian government, LCSI, which is Michael's company that makes Lynx coding software, Fair Chance Learning, Cisco, C21, Deloitte, and uh, InkSmith. And the, what we have been doing are some sessions for Code to Learn at home. We usually do this live with teachers and students in schools, but right now we're, um, we're sharing with you virtually, so it's the first time for us. Yesterday, uh, Peter shared a Lynx coding session where we were learning about how to use uh, a browser-based coding software called Lynx to create art. And tomorrow, Michael is doing a get a stay well card, interactive card. So if you like coding and you want to continue that work, you can check out the recordings, you can come back to other Art of the Links workshops over the next few weeks, or you can check out Michael's card uh, session tomorrow. So um, we'll be focusing today on microbit, but that's also part of the um, project, project with Links coding. Click allow, right? Pardon me? So I guess one of the things that we're noticing all around the world, we're focused on caring for each other big time right now, right? So we're making adjustments, we're working from home, we have school happening at home, we may not be seeing our friends and neighbors the way we usually do. So we decided that we wanted to have some fun today uh, while we learn, and we're really glad that, that you're here. This session is actually, was actually originally titled Getting Started with Microbit. So it's designed for people who are brand new to Microbit. If you already have Microbits or you know a lot about them, we would love you to be very active and share what you know in the chat. You can answer questions, you can tweet out your creations. Um, I'll show you the hashtag in a second, or it was on the front of the slide actually, hashtag can code to learn. Um, you can even just move off and explore on your own. We're gonna go pretty slowly, but it's really up to you. We are not face to face, so you can watch what we do and just take it all in, and you can watch recordings later to go through it step by step, or you can follow along as we go. It's really whatever suits you. The recordings will be posted, and if you um, hang in there till the end, you get to um, put your name in, which will allow us to get, send you reminders about other sessions and recordings and enter you in a prize draw, so keep that in mind. So when we were talking, Michael, Peter, and I, we thought, oh, you know what? We don't, we don't, we know kids are by themselves. They're at home right now. They might not even have access to their library or their library learning commons at school to get there to borrow a micro bit for this session. Could we still do it? What if kids don't have a micro bit? Can we still have fun with them? And we decided, yes, the coding is done online. So all of you are going to be able to participate. And we just thought we would go ahead with that. But also, we usually work with kids in my, and microbits in classrooms, not online. So um, I am not a complete expert on microbits. We'll be learning, so doing some learning here together. We will probably get stumped along the way. We'll solve problems together. We'll fix bugs maybe in our programs. That's the fun of coding. So I think more than anything, I'm not really here to teach you everything about 
Microbit. I'm here to give you tips on how to learn how to learn Microbit. And I hope that travel board is looking familiar for you with to you because I bet you're playing lots of games at home with your family. Hopefully Scrabble is one of them. Awesome learning game. So what do I do when I need to learn something new? I go to my powerful learning network online. I follow the at microbit edu Twitter handle. I follow the hashtag microbit and I follow some amazing educators that are also using microbit like these folks, Melanie, Amanda, Larissa and Katie. And many of the things that Amanda and Melanie share, and Larissa, because they're teacher librarians, is they often tie in their favorite stories and books to design challenges that you can do with my, my, um, microbits. And I really find this super fun because I love books and I love coding. So while you're doing your activities today, today you might think of ways you might tie in microbits with some of the reading you're doing at home. Hopefully you're getting a chance to do a lot of reading. I am really fun that way. And then the other thing I'm always looking for is the way are the ways that people use technology for good. So this is really the inspiration for this session today. My friends Doug, Andrew and Jeremy, they work for a company called Inksmith 3D. And I don't know, what do you think 3D stands for? Maybe we can ask people to answer in the chat. Inksmith 3D, what would the 3D stand for? Any guesses coming in there, Peter and Michael? We have, we have uh, one guess that it's uh, three dimensions from Nick. It does have to do with three dimensions. Nick, you are almost all the way there, definitely. What Inksmith does is they do, they print in three dimensions, okay? So it's, it's, it's 3D printing. So they just got their Health Canada certification. They're from Waterloo. They just got their Health Canada certification to be making masks for the COVID frontline workers. And so we're so proud of them. They're right from here in Ontario. Um, they're partners with us on Code to Learn and they provide microbits and climate action kits that work with microbits. So if you're interested in technology like they are, you might be interested in finding, having a job that makes the world a better place and one day you might be creating some of these things. So a big shout out to Inksmith 3D. So technology for good is kind of our focus today. So I guess one thing we have to do is some people here might not even know what a microbit is. So I have a two minute little video here that I like to share because it shows kind of the ultimate um, what kids are doing with uh, microbits. Now, we don't have the microbits with us, so these are things you're going to have to do uh, in the future when you have the microbit, but it gives you an idea of what it can do and its potential. So I'm going to turn up my volume a tad, and let's hope that you can hear this. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try again. The microbit is a pocket-sized computer that lets you get creative with digital technology. You can code, customize, and control your microbit from anywhere. Light up the LED display to create something simple in minutes, or even communicate between microbits. Or get really creative with microbit's more advanced features, like its buttons, motion detector, compass, and sensors. You could create a guitar that changes the volume the more you shake it. Or a flick football game that powers a microbit scoreboard. And you can connect it to other devices, sensors and everyday objects. So you could water your thirsty plants. Or use Bluetooth to take photos with your phone. And control your music player and you can customize the micro bit in any way you can imagine. It's really anything you want it to be. I think it's a bit like a robot. It's quite different to any other technology I've sort of used before. You just have fun with it. I can like control me. my tablet. You can make games, you can take pictures. Kind of something that's sensitive. Movement. And you can just place it in your pocket and make whatever you want. 
We'll describe it as a neutral. <laughs> All right, so pretty cool little device. I don't know if there were any questions that popped up in the chat there, Peter and Michael, but you can let me know. So here is what it looks like. The top picture is the front of a micro bit, and the bottom picture is the back of a micro bit. So you can see there's some pretty heavy duty stuff here. There's a matrix of LED lights on the top. We're gonna to be using that today. There are buttons, button A and B, that I've circled in red there. Those are user buttons. We're going to use those today. And then there's various spots where you would connect to other sensors, sources, batteries, um, a USB, a motion sensor, lots of externals that you can uh, use with this microcomputer. So pretty, pretty versatile little thing, all powerful in a little package. And then if you were at home with your micro bit and you were creating something on the computer like we're going to do, you would also have the chance then to download that file one at a time, like it holds one file at a time to the micro bit. And then you can detach it from your computer and have a battery pack that works with it. So that then, then you can make creations like what you saw in the video where you're attaching that little mi micro bit with duct tape or tape or cardboard, whatever you're you're wanting to attach it with, and it will still it will still work for you. So we'll be in the online space. So I wanted to just do before we jump in there, just do a little walkthrough of what the interface looks like when you get there. So there's a, a header, a bar that is letter A there. Micro bit, when you click that, that's your home button. So it takes you home to the dashboard and you can folder projects and share projects. You can, um, we're going to work with the blocks um, elements that selected, but you can also use JavaScript. So you can, you can, it's quite versatile the way, the way you can code, but we'll use blocks for, for our purposes today. B, <clears throat> B is uh, the front of a micro bit. Okay, so that's where we're going to see the action happening. We're calling that an emulator or a simulator. So whatever we code in our section called D there, we're, is going to show up for us when we click buttons on D. So that's how we can have almost the same experience as having a micro bit. It's pretty cool that way. C are all the elements, categories, that you can open up and you can choose different, um, different commands for your, for your program. Um, there's quite a few there. One is not showing in my image here. Is there's actually a turtle. So I wanted to uh, share that with my, my Lynx coding friends here. You can actually do some turtle commands inside of your micro bit. D is where you're going to pull the blocks. E is where you're going to download your files. If you had a um, micro bit, we're not going to need to use the download today. But beside that download button where you say where you see untitled, you'll name your files and save them. And then whenever you open up this particular computer again and go to make code, you're going to see your files available to you. Okay? All right. Brenda? Yeah. Um, I've been answering some questions in chat, but did you tell everyone where to go to get the virtual simulator? Not yet. That's exactly okay. the next slide. So they're just right. one step ahead of me. Okay. So let's go there. Exciting. Let's get the virtual simulator. So you're going to go to your browser and you're going to type in makecode.microbit.org and you're going to get to your landing page, which should look like this. And I'm going to stop sharing my slides and I'm actually going to go to the same space that you're in. Okay. So, um, Peter, everybody, you seeing my make my micro bit landing page? I am. Okay, good. All right. So we'll give people just a minute to get there. I don't know if anybody can let us know that they're there, but um, we're going to start with the simplest, one of the very simplest. Um, I, I've got five challenges for us here today. So we're going to start with number one. It's going to be pretty quick just to get us all in, um, 
in the um, in the same place. So you're going to click if you're following along. You're going to click new project, and I'm going to click one that I've already uh, saved. Okay, and I think um, yeah, I think I'm going to actually. The reason I wanted to show you this is. Um, Actually, hopefully people are still watching because I forgot something here. I wanted to show you the reason that this is the best place ever as a landing page is that your projects get stored across the top here where mine are. And then down below, there are a, a lot of tutorials that you can try and they, they are beautifully laid out for new learners to microbit. They take you step by step and our first challenge together is going to show you what that tutorial looks like. Um, we're going to do name tag. So in a minute, that's the one I would like you to click on. And one feature that I thought was pretty cool that I've seen in Minecraft EDU and in make code here uh, from Microsoft is they've got a couple of dads and kids. Uh, so far, I haven't seen any moms, just the dads. Um, but they are doing some live coding demonstrations of those tutorials. So that's something you might want to check out. There's a game section. Radio games uh, mean multiple um, microbits can communicate together. Wearables is in the fashion section. So you can make a step counter, a stopwatch. You can actually add music, which we'll do a little bit of today. And then you can make toys. Um, you can have science experiments. You can um, use your microbit as a tool uh, to do various things. And um, there's your turtle. Uh, tutorials for moving your turtle around, lots of amazing things. Teachers in the crowd, look at the courses you might take and um, also the coding cards that you might download. So just such a rich place to play and experiment. So let's go to name tag. And I'm going to show you how a tutorial works. We're only going to use, I think, the tutorial this first time. The other challenge is we won't need it for. We'll, we'll have learned what we're going to do. So when you start a tutorial, it explains what you're going to do with your emulator right off the bat. So this name tag is going to let you put in a name and show on the LED screen um, what your name is. OK, very simple. So I'm going to click OK. And then you notice that up here, at the top, there's a next and a back, so you can always review the steps, but it's going to show you every step that you need to do in, in order to make your name badge. It's also going to, and this is pretty nice when you get, you're getting started. Remember we saw that big, long strip here below basics? Uh, we saw a big, long strip of all kinds of elements for the coding. With the tutorials, it takes you to just what you need. So you don't get a, um, a little, you don't get overwhelmed by lots of extras, but you will easily access them soon. So don't worry about that. So the first thing it's gonna do is ask us to bring a blue, uh, two blue things, two blue blocks out into our coding space. And blue means basic. So those are the basic commands. We're gonna place the show string block in the forever block and in order for it to repeat, and we're gonna change the text to our name. And then we're going to say next. And then we're going to look at the simulator and guess what? Our name should be showing up. OK. So let's see. Let's try that. If we don't need this on start, we can just put it in the garbage can there, recycle it. And we can go to basic. And right there are the two commands we need to do this name badge. So we say show string. And then I'm going to put my name in here. Uh, instead of hello, I'm going to say my name is Brenda. Actually, why don't we just type it right in there. My name is Brenda. Okay, and there's the quotations that pop up for me. And what? It's starting right away. I can see it on the emulator. Brenda. A little practice to read some of those LED letters sometimes. It works and it repeats because we gave it a forever command. We asked it to repeat, so that's why it's doing that. So I just want to show you a couple of things here. You can use these buttons below your emulator to stop, to reset to the beginning, 
to go in slow mo. Okay, so I don't know, this one's pretty slow already. It's not too fast. Um, to mute audio, which we don't need to do today at this point, or I'm going to reset to go full screen, full screen. So you can see it a little bit closer up. Okay, so that's name badge. And then basically it just repeats. You could add more things, more strings in that block to create your own story, more messages, symbols, that kind of thing. But we're just starting you off with that first. How are we doing? I think you're doing well. Any questions about that one coming up? Um, they, they appear to be very happy. Okay, cool. So I'm going to exit the tutorial. So those are, that's, what, that's the way you would be taken through any of these projects. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my slides. And um, we're going to have our first challenge. Okay, so our first challenge with our microbit. So here's our friend Peter. Oh, my gosh. Peter, can you tell us what's going on? Our text today is going to be this photograph that you posted yesterday on Facebook. So can you tell us? a little bit about what's going on in this photo. You might have to unmute. Okay. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Go for That's it. That's good. That's my uh, daughter. They're the tall young woman and uh, my five-month-old granddaughter. And, of course, we are practicing our distance uh, keeping these days, given the circumstances. But we made a pot of soup and took it over to the house. And here, uh, her one of her favorite little songs is the Incy Weensy Spider, or the Itsy Bitsy Spider, depending on how you like to sing it. So that's what she's watching there. All right. Thank you. Okay, so when we think about it, we have had to really think about different ways that we can message the special people in our lives these days. So for some of us, that has meant phone calls, for some of us, it has meant visits that look a little different, like what Peter has said here. Um, so what we'd like to do for our first challenge is we're going to use a micro bit to send a special message to someone we know. And in doing that, we're going to use those LEDs a little differently than we just did for name badge. And we're going to start using our button on the emulator. So in the chat, think about who are the people right now um, or, or at home, without, if you don't want to put it in the chat, you have a little talk at home. Who are the people that you would send a little special message to? What would you say to them? Um, and just, just think about that for a second. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to sort of think about that. And maybe Michael could share some of the ones in the chat. So it could be a thank you, it could be a hello, it could be an I love you, a joke. What would you be sharing to be positive? Nothing coming in yet. Okay. Well, people are going to have a chance to think about that. And in the meantime, I'm going to take us back to um, make code. And maybe we'll just get started. And as they're thinking and watching, they could think about what their message is. So for this one, we're out of the tutorials now. You folks, I know you can do it. We're going to go to new project. And let's see, did I already have one that is a message? I did, and I hopefully cleared it up. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Let's just get ready. Uh, let's get rid of these. Start from scratch. Okay. So for you folks, what we want to do is we want to, now you'll notice we're out of the tutorial, so I've got lots of options to play around with and look at here. And what I thought we would do is we're going to look at our button A and our button B. So maybe we might even create two messages, who, do you, who knows, right? So buttons are found in inputs. 
okay, because they help us um, give an input to the emulator that we see there. And we can program the, each of the buttons by choosing A, B, or A, B. So we have nice, we have three nice input options right here. Um, so when A button is pressed, I'm going to show you two ways you could send a message. You already know the first way. So that would be by going into basic and clicking show string. And I could type my message, my positive message right here. Okay. Um, so let's see what hello looks like. When button A is pressed, we get our message hello. Cool. All right. Another way you can do it is on button B, let's try it a little differently. Um, we could also, I want to do it more down here. We could also make our own letters. Okay. So um, if we were making our own letters, we just select or deselect LEDs like this. Um, so let's say I was going to make the word hi to my neighbor because so I was saying hello as they pass by. They just click right in like that. And you can see I chose pretty easy words. You can tell I've done this before. <laughs> um, so when button B is pressed, what should we see? We should see these two letters. Okay. So uh, let's see if that happens. H I. Now see it kind of shows up a little differently. So it doesn't string along the way our button A does, right? So there's different times when you'd want things showing up like a letter and and like an LED panel and, and sometimes you'd want the string. All right. So do we have any suggestions for messages in there, Michael, in the chat? Yes, I have one from Avery, and it was to my Baba. Hi, Baba. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I love you. Oh, so nice. So I'm going to have to remember all of those words. To my Baba. Hi, Baba. How, would, how were they spelling Baba? B A B A. Right. Okay. I might. I'm, do I'm doing great. Okay. Notice I just um, duplicated my string there. A little easier than going to find it. I'm doing great. Okay. How are you doing? And I love you. Awesome. Okay. So I have a thought because Avery is on the right track here. So I'm going to put that string in there. Now, um, if we ever wanted to add something else, we could pull the whole block down like so. Okay. So I kind of thought it'd be nice. I love you. It'd be nice if a heart followed that, right? So we could go into basic again and look at the show icon. We could add an icon and there's a lot of different ones to choose from, but I kind of like that big heart. Okay, so we won't have any pauses here yet, but we could add them if we want. We could add pauses here. Maybe we'll pause between her last words and uh, for 100 milliseconds, and we'll, um, for a hundredth of a second, I think that is, yes, and then we'll show the icon. So let's see what happens. Doing great. I like how it spaces between the words too when you use the string. And it has a nice pause. Now, in my family, we might videotape this with our phone and then send it to Baba. That would be fun if she to see if she could read it. So here comes I love you, and let's see, and the heart. Nice. Okay, nice, Avery. Nice job there. 
So hopefully other people are thinking of ways they could do that. So you could actually program your button, your uh, micro bit rather, to do a message on A, a message on B. You could also, as you notice, choose another pink block A and B. And when you press both buttons together, actually, let's show that one. Because what happens on your emulator, since you don't have buttons, is you get a new button. And then you would choose, you would click A and B together, and you can be doing things with A and B together. Okay. Um, if you wanted something to keep going forever, uh, actually, we'll save that for the next challenge. That's coming up next. Okay. Let's move on. I'm going to go back here just for a minute to our next little. Um, so that's a special people. Okay. Now, here's another thing we were thinking about. We're at home. Our routines are kind of changed. We're sharing spaces. Oh my gosh. And sometimes we don't have that much space to be sharing, but we're here. Maybe we're ha families of four or six. We're sharing our stuff. Our routines aren't usual. We're in different mo moods and different times. We, we're not outside as much as we'd like to be. Our friends aren't with us. So, you know, it's normal to have different kinds of feelings all day long. So we know that emoticons are one way that we're using um, digital tools to share our feelings. So we thought, hey, let's see what we can do with the micro bit and let's see if we can create some emotions that flash on our screen, which might help us talk uh, with our families about how we're feeling. So we're going to learn how to put two buttons on. Hey, you already learned that. You learned a little bit about icons already. And oh, actually, pause. So our new item is repeat. So let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, so I'm going to go back to make code and I'm going to go to my home. And I'm going to start with my, let's see, I hope it's empty. Yeah, good. I cleaned it out for you. I was practicing some of these things earlier. So, okay, so for flashing emotions, we probably want as many emotions as we can. So we might be using all three of our buttons. So. I don't know if people are sharing some of the feelings they've been having uh, as they've been um, in, um, I'm going to just duplicate this, as they've been sort of self-isolating and staying at home to help so, our yeah. world, what are they saying? I'm seeing some happy and some sad and some emoticons that they're making. Oh, yeah. Okay. So why not? There'll be enough uh, feelings, I think, that people are having. Why don't we try and we'll pull out all of our button commands. So we've got A, B, and A, B. And we're going to get these to um, show icons um, to describe how we feel. And then we're going to get it to pause and clear a screen. I think that's what we're, we want it to do. So, for example, um, we know we've already got some built-in ones already in the program. So I'm going to choose happy, okay? Um, and I want it to flash. So I want it to be big and then small and kind of do that repeatedly, right? So I'm going to choose a big heart first, and then I, I really like right-clicking and duplicating. So I'm going to put a small heart later. Yeah, there's a small heart, okay? So, um, but wait a second. I don't want it to do it too fast, so I want to add a pause. Where did my pause go? My pause under input doesn't make sense that it would be under input. It makes sense that it would be under base. Ah, I missed it. Okay. So I'm going to put a pause in between so that it should flash with a big heart, flash with a little heart. And that's, that's going to be maybe my one of my happies, right? Or uh, for my happy, I could take this one. Um, I could make it happy face, and then I could make it happy face with the pause, and it would still flash. So let's try that one, maybe. Okay. So when I push A, let's see what happens. Okay. It didn't clear my screen, because guess what? I didn't tell it to. I want it to flash. So I want it to clear my screen. So let me just see what I'm going to do here. Let's go and find my clear screen. There, it's under more in basic, and I think I want it to show and pause. Then I want it to show and pause. Um, 
And then I want it to also clear screen again. So I'm going to put that in there. Okay. So let's see what I've got. Button A. Might have to do a reset. There we go. My pause is not working the way I would like it to. Hang on. That is a bug. And now uh, Brenda has found a bug and she That's is hard. debugging. Maybe I don't need the greatest a part. Maybe what I need is the clear screen. Maybe that's the most important part. I'm just pulling these apart and I'm going to test this. Let's see what happens now. Not helping me. Hmm. It could be doing it so fast. I don't know. This is unusual. So some people are wondering why the name bug happened. Well, when the very first computer, the ENIAC, was created in the 40s, they actually had a serious problem because it was a huge big machine that filled a room and it stopped working. And what happened? An actual moth or bug of some sort flew into it and, and caused a problem. That's how the term bug came to be, I do believe. Are you kidding? Wow, I did not know that. But I can't you. Part of it got fixed. I did not know that. Part of it got fixed, and now it is pausing for so long and not, and not showing my icon the second time. That's crazy. But I've got my feelings ready for my button A. Okay, so I'm going to move on and try it again with button B and see what happens here. Let me get rid of that. So I heard you say that some folks were feeling a bit sad too. So I could be actually drawing um, my own, right? If I wanted. So let's see what my sad might look like. It looks like sad. Okay, if I'm feeling sad. And then um, maybe a, I will show no LEDs. Let's try doing this a little differently. And then maybe I will show this one again. I hope it doesn't have anything to do with my duplicating because I really like duplicating. Okay, and this one you could see it might be a little bit, in terms of the real estate on your screen, a little bit hard, but let's see. It should show an LED, then show nothing, then show an LED when I click B. Oh, that seems nice. Maybe I found a more efficient way to do it for this particular project. Yeah, we can't. We can't see the, the bottom show LEDs, uh, the third one. Can you see it now? Yes. So it's a happy face LED, then it's nothing, then it's another happy face, right? Okay. So I would like this to keep going. I don't want to keep pushing that button. So I'm going to go into loops and um, maybe I want it to go four times so that I know that the people in my family are getting the hint. I'm feeling a little bit stressed. I need to go for a walk or I need a little change of pace. Okay, so if I click button B now, it should repeat four times, show, don't show, show. So it's sort of a flash, uh, flashing that. Ah, let's see. One, two, oh, I guess because I didn't, I don't have don't shows at the end. So it shows it, um, it goes through just three. Nice. Any questions about that one? Uh, there don't seem to be any questions about it. Okay. We have two more. Let's see if we can finish two more challenges in our time together here. Okay. So this one's really fun. You, I hope, are playing a lot of board games at home with your family, or maybe you're, you're even inventing games, and you don't have any dice at home, die, but you have a computer. So how about we program a microbit emulator to be your dice? And so you could have your, you and your friend could pull up your laptops or your phone or your iPad, and they could be your dice. So we're going to learn how to do some random numbers, and we're going to learn the shape command with your, with your microbit now. So back home where your projects are stored, 
You can open a new project if you're doing it uh, on your own. I have, I've already named mine Dice down here at the bottom. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty good. This one, I think in, in lieu of time, I'm going to just kind of walk right through it. Okay. So remember we saw the button input before we used a we used a B, we used B we could also use a and B together this one is on shake so if you had a real micro bit in your hand you could shake it and make it do things okay physically shake it but we don't have it um, here but as soon as we put that input on our uh, board here the micro bit does give us a shake button and it, and it look it shakes so we can emulate, simulate the shaking, and we can make our dice. So what we need, if we make a typical, let's say a typical dice that you might be using um, for your board games, how many sides do we need um, on, well, we need to show numbers, right? So that'd be our first thing. So why don't we get a, a number and we're going to show it, okay? So now we're telling it on shape, we want it to show a number. So how many sides are there on a dice? How many numbers show up? They're answering six. Six, right. So we would, we need to put something, some variable in here so that we know um, a randomly, when you shake a dice, randomly, one of those six um, numbers shows up. So we can go into um, our numbers. Let's go into uh, math, our purple ones, and we're going to choose the pick random, okay? So we're going to pull that and see how oval that shape is. It's going to fit right in that circle and click there. So now we're going to show a random number from, you said six, and we would want to start, do we ever roll a zero? Nope, we don't roll a zero. So we're gonna roll we're gonna roll anything from one to six. Okay. So now hopefully you are that's a really simple one to do, isn't it? You can click shake, get your get your um, micro bit to shake. I rolled a three, I rolled a one, I rolled a five. Oh my gosh, we could do so many probability checks with this, couldn't we? We could have fun doing that. I wonder if anybody's having success with that one. Any questions? That one is so nice and easy and so fun to use. Could you make a working calculator? You could make a working calculator. Um, you would want to be using a lot of those um, numbers. Now, I'm wondering how you might do that. That is so interesting because what I might do is get inputs um, from buttons A and B. I don't know how I would do that. Yeah, I'm sure you could do it. And another question is, can you make a working video game? Yes. So remember when I was showing you the, um, the tutorials? If you go to games, there are several that you can have where you're chasing an LED around your screen and, and clicking um, buttons. The ones that I've played are with the actual micro bit in my hand, so it's a little bit easier to push buttons. But if you look under that game section, uh, back where you're in your tutorials, you will see how to do that. And it will walk you through how to, how to make some of that. And you can use more than one micro bit and have them talk to one another. Is that correct? Yes, you can. So when you see, um, what do they call that? In the tutorial section, when you see, um, like there's a dice, these, these radio games. When you see radio games, they're, they're um, sending signals to each other. So that's where you'd find out more about those. Um, yeah, so everyone, uh, Brenda's obviously got only a limited amount of time, but the that site that you're at now has lots of tutorials on using microbits to do different types of activities. Mm -hmm. 
And we are on week one, so getting started with microbits is this week. So we might continue and do some more um, in-depth projects if you'd like. We were, we were designing this one for somebody who'd never seen a microbit. The other thing you can do is um, you can add music, um, which is pretty fun to explore. So you could actually have um, a number, a dice rolled, and you could ha actually have it when certain dice, some students have done this when I've been at workshops, where certain dice are rolled, a different sound happens, a different key, whatever. So that might look like this. So that's playing a whole tune and repeating it once. Um, you know, you could get a song started. You could you can actually compose your own music because look, if you um, uh, let's see. You it actually when you pull it a ringtone, you might choose middle C, but you could also compose um, your own music if you like playing around with music. So there's endless things to do. Okay, I have one more that I just want to show you because I think it'd be fun if I was playing. Are there any more questions? Sorry, I should have asked you that. It's hard when I can't see. Uh, the can you make a synthesizer or electric keyboard? Is one. And another question is, can you make an RC uh, like a radio control car? That? I, I don't know about the car, but I do know about, what was the other one? Can you make a synthesizer or electric keyboard? Yeah, so you could check out this um, this piano keyboard and the guitar um, tutorials for that one. That's got to be week three for me, <laughs> but I'll get on it. <laughs> I would exactly. love to We've got time, let's just say. We've got time to be exploring these. Things. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, it's nice to know what people would be interested into. That's going to really help us. Okay, scorekeeper I thought was pretty cool, but we might do it this way just in the in the um, in in the essence of time. So um, there's a there's a project that's linked here, and do we share these slides, Peter and Michael? We do, right? Or yes, we we can do that easily yeah. for okay. sure. So as there's... long as sorry, as long as we have everybody's email and permission to email them. Yeah. So there's a project called um, Salute. If you, if you go to the tutorials and that, that help section, you know when you play the game where you put something up to your forehead, a card, and people have to guess what you are? You can do that with microbits too. If you had the actual microbit, you probably wouldn't hold your laptop up to your head. But one element of that project that I thought was so fun, is, and I could see my kids playing this when we're doing a board game or at home, I could see um, somebody coding a scorekeeper for us, or maybe we're inventing a game and we would do it. So I thought what we could do is see what we've learned right now, because one of the fun things about coding is you can see what other people have coded and then you can deconstruct it. Okay, so that means you can look at what they've got here and then you can predict what would happen and then you can remix it or, or, um, or you know, make it your own, change it up. So <clears throat> I wish we don't all have voice here, unfortunately, in the in the um, in the chat, but I'll just walk you through what how I would sort of think out loud about this one. So scorekeeper will help you use all of the buttons and it will help you use strings of uh, words like we've done and it'll add an element called conditionals. So these are when you tell the computer to do something, if if a certain case is, is happening, do this, or else do this, or else do this. So for I thought this was a nice, easy way and functional way to show, show, show this kind of coding. So if button A is pressed, you're going to grab a red button in the game section. So this is doing more of that games piece. You're going to change player one score by one. So every time player one gets does something, they're going to hit the button and score. On button B, you're going to change it to player two. So player two's score will increase by one every time you hit your button two or button B. Um, now, when the game is over or when you, when you deem it is over and you want to find out who has won, someone would click A and B together. And remember that button's going to pop up on your emulator when you code it. And if player one score equals player two score, then you're going to create a string that says on the microbit tie that makes sense or else if player one score is greater than player two score you're going to show a string that 
says whatever you want for player one, winner, player one, or congrats, player one, or hooray, whatever you want to do. You could even add a tune in there specific to player one. Or else, if player one isn't greater than player two, then the only other condition that's available is player two is the winner. So you could show a string that tells player two um, they are the winner. And then you're going to show a number after that. Uh, and it looks like there's a plus sign, so they may have even added a little pause in there. Um, you're going to show a number, uh, the maximum of player one and player two. So what was the high score? And I might even add a little celebration song in there too. Now, so that's your three buttons. Now I'm noticing they, this is one I was hoping we'd have time to test, but we may not. On logo down, so what that means when you tip your actual physical micro bit down, you could do a reset. So you're going to set player two score to zero. You're going to set player one score to zero. You're going to show a string that's called reset, give a pause, and then clear the screen so you know you're ready to go. Now, um, I don't know if that works with the emulator actually, but I was thinking of an alternate. We know another button that we could use instead of logo down if we're just using our emulator for this coding. What is it? Anybody know? Some are asking what was the question again? The question is, instead of using a logo down, because we don't have a micro bit, in order to do that, that reset, to turn the player's one and two scores to zero and start over if we were playing again, we can't use logo down because we don't have a micro bit. What could we use instead? So we have two, two uh, answers that say shake. Yeah, exactly. You got it, you guys. Way to go. We could use shake. And then that would reset our, um, our micro bit. So again, that live coding session is, I think, really cool. It's a new addition based on all of us learning from home over the last week. So check that out. It's in my code. The tutorials are amazing. Um, you know, and we might think of the games and um, caring for each other projects that we were talking about today. But when I'm on, I told you that I learn a lot from um, when I, when I learn a lot from my, my friends like Mel um, and Amanda and um, Larissa and Katie, but when I was online just looking at what people are doing with the microbit hashtag, here's a lady whose son coded, they have a Frenchie dog that has seizures. And so their son coded a microbit to um, send an alarm on shake and a delay so that when the dog didn't re really like regularly like a dog shake it wouldn't go off in error so you know like there's just that technology for good piece that we were talking about each before and taking care of each other is so important and you can get started with microbit um mel and amanda have done micro pets these are really cool little videos where um where students are creating things and then embedding their um, their creations into their microbit coding into the creation. So let's see if we can hear. It. So they made a bluebird of some kind there, and this person. Okay. I have permission to share these. Oh, a shake command. Look at that, or a tilt down. Whatever you shake it. Uh-huh, so she did some different inputs, a uh, tilt down and a shake. And here's an example of some of the creations that those students did. So really a nice versatile tool. I hope you'll play with it. Um, I hope you'll use the tutorials. And thanks, Mel. I know she's online here, so um, really appreciate your the learning from, that I get from you. That's awesome.